Hello guys and welcome to the long-awaited massive tutorial. The sound is perfect as you can see, so sure sure. <laughs> just a quick heads up on those who didn't like my quote unquote informal attitude in the first tutorial. I'm just gonna say you won't like this either because I intend to be myself and keep things chilled. I do have a variety channel and as a near YouTube partner, I wanna not just seem like an organization or whatever, but also a personality. Having said that, we should be much more controlled and productive in this video. I'm not promising anything, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so, the drums I need to get sorted out first. I've um, got a few notes here to refer back to. Once I've got the drums made, I mean, I won't, I won't have to mess about with them. Uh, so, I know where I'm going, so, you know, let's do it. Uh, so, firstly, let's, let's talk about Massive a bit, a few facts about it. Uh, it is made by Native Instruments. It's a its usual retail price is 180 euros or 200 dollars or around 150 pounds. However, at the time of recording, it is half price on the Image Line website. So bloody get your asses over there. And then that was from the dates of the 18th to the 24th of June 2012. Uh, according to the website, Massive is a sonic monster, the ultimate synth for basses and leads. The analog concept belies the contemporary cutting edge. Did I say leads again? I need to stop saying leads. Honestly, people have a go at me for that. The analog concept belies the contemporary cutting edge sound it generates. The high end end engine delivers pure quality, lending in an undeniable virtue and character to even the most saturated of sounds. The interface is clearly laid out and easy to use, but you're looking at the tutorial, so I mean, I found it hard too at first. <laughs> Ensuring you will have massive generating earth shuddering sounds from the very first note. Uh, but that's the thing with Massive, it's important to note its versatility too. As I will demonstrate later, um, it too is capable of generating keys and other such sounds like bells and stuff. So you know, it's not just a bass or lead generator. Uh, also, as a bit of a disclaimer just before we start, some of you seem to have got the idea that because I did a basic tutorial of a program, I'm a musical professional. When in fact this is not the case, I am actually only 17 and I've been using FL Studio for about 2-3 to three years now. Having said that, I have learned a lot since the initial tutorial, and so I feel a bit more capable to share with you some more reliable and useful knowledge now. Uh, while I can show you how to do something though, as far as becoming a professional or the next dead mouse is concerned, I have about as much chance as you do. <laughs> so first, uh, let's show you some of the presets I've designed myself. So as you can see, this is a track I have pre-made here. Um, just for the intro there, turn that off now. Uh, no nice fade out or anything, but let's start a new a new project. Uh, have I changed that? I can't remember. Don't think I did. Um, so, here we are, I've got the initial kick, clap, hats there. I'm just going to do something a little bit differently to set the drums up, because I don't like that anymore. Right, we've got all our drums sorted out, we don't really need the ride bell and all that at the moment, just basic, basic drums. Um, right, so we've got them. Let's close that up now. I don't think we need anything else, just got the drums and the massive, because let's, let's try and push massive, let's use it for every single instrument we can. Um, so I think the, the the most wise thing to do to stop everyone from turning off is, well first I'm going to show the presets, but then I'll start showing you how to do dubstep basses, because let's be honest, uh, that's what everyone thinks of when we talk about massive. Um, so let's go into our folder here. Massive. I actually have an old version of massive, I used to have the the, the newest one, but I don't know what the freak's going on. Uh, I seem to have restored this backup. I'm a bit lazy, really. So as you can see, I've got all these presets. I didn't make them all. Uh, I didn't, well, I've made about five. I'll show you my list in a minute. Um, but basically, now that I've learnt myself how to completely use a massive interface, I don't need any of these. I mean... Yeah. I'm going to have to re-import that now. <laughs> Don't have to set it to nout. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to be in put a moment. So, let's go over some of the basics just while I, uh, um, you know, show you my my own. Um, basically, as you can see, this is where everything is modified. Uh, we'll go into that in more detail in a bit. Uh, it's quite a lot of stuff, but it's pretty simple once you know your way around it. Here is where you can assign attributes to the current sound. Say, you've loaded one here. Um, this does not seem to have any att attributes, but that's okay. Don't know how to, the hell to deselect them. Deselect. Well, that sucks. Well, it's a synth anyway. Uh, so yeah, you can just put in some meta information and stuff when you're designing your own. Um, so it's, you know, just some extra stuff. Um, that panel is pretty useful, but you know, the macro control, but you don't really need that because it's also in the browser. 
Now the browser is just uh, an easy way to find the preset that you want. Um, obviously, if you're just going to have your own. But if you buy Massive now, by the way, you don't just get the 600 factory presets. You actually get another 600 uh, of the all the expansions are all included now. Yeah, expansions for a plugin. Uh, but you know, I I was dead into all of these presets, but then I was like, whoa, I can make my own. There's no need, no need for them. So you know, the main panel that you'll be working on is the synth. Um, so let's show you my some of my presets. I've got my little notepad file. Let's see how many I've managed to do so far. Not a lot. So I've got a light square hit. Let's let's see what that is. Um, there it is. Oh, I've also got light up. That's what I made. So that's basically a bit of envelopes, choosing the right um, oscillators, a uh, bit of delay, a bit of reverb, nothing too fancy. Um, that's about it really. Give me one minute. Sorry about that. Um, so as you, yeah, that's basically all it is. Bit of pitch bend by twelve. I'm really hoping their notes. It seems to work, but if they are hertz, <laughs> then I don't know what's going on. But it seems to work. Um, but yeah, that's the first one. It's quite a nice soft. As you can see, it's not the le lead or uh, bass that you'd expect. That shows its versatility. Um, that's going to light up. Now this is quite cool. This makes use of the, uh, what's it called? The performance, or I like to call it the, not the performance, the stepper, yeah. So, take a look at this. As you can see, it is, it's kind of just like arpeggiating around where I've set. It's very simple. I'll show you that later. Um, yeah, very nice. You can do chords with it and all sorts. And that's another thing you want to be careful with Massive. When you're doing basses, chords probably aren't a good idea. Because um, it will clash. The difference in frequencies will cause like phase differences. Like, and it will just sound nasty. Um, but let's let's not go too OTT with that. Uh, what else we got? Dark square. So it's got light square and dark square. I like my squares. Quite a weird one. I'm not sure if I actually like the detune on that. I thought I'd save that. Yeah, I'm going to save it like that because I don't like the noise. Uh, I haven't found a good use for noise yet. <laughs> it just makes it sound horrible. So, that's another one of my presets. I will be explaining all these very soon. I'm just running you through them all. Um, showing you that I know how to make it. <laughs> Gated base. Is that the next one on the list? Yeah, I suppose. There it is, it's an LFO, you know it's a bass. <laughs> but it's also a uh, arpeggiated one. So it's actually got a LFO attached to the panning. So it, it goes from, I don't know if you can hear this in stereo, and you know, the amazing technological advancements, but yeah. <laughs> goes from left to right rather quick. I like that effect. It's like phasing basically. Um, the one thing I'm not too sure about is the modulation of this. It seems to only apply whatever these do to one at a time. Um, but they do do effects if you like. So they, they are useful. Whatever they are. You can hear a change and that's all that matters. <laughs> um, what else have we got? We've done light up. Innocent echoes. I like this one. Now this is the one that sounds like mass effect. Um, I wish I was about to type in. Um, it's been compared to that anyway. Um, so as you know, I'm more of an OST person, a soundtrack person, than a mainstream kind of song person. Wait, what is it? What, what are the notes? Oh, nah, it's, it's much higher up. Let's just take it up an octave. Boom. 
Well, anyway, it's very echoey, as you can tell. Um, I did, in one of the songs I did, somewhere, um, basically I had, I had a few notes that sounded like the bleeding uh, motif of <laughs> Mass Effect soundtrack, which I didn't intend, but it, it just worked out that way with... See, why does that sound like a minor? It sounds like a minor. I'm worried about any detune I might have accidentally put on it. Hmm. <laughs> Trying to get those notes of a Mass Effect motif, I can't remember. Anyway, so I like that very much so. Innocent Echoes. Deep voiced teen. You know, that's, I find that quite funny. Um, it's obviously not me, but hey ho. Oh dear. I can't type at the moment. What the hell am I typing? Well, that's not, let's get <laughs> of the octave. Now, this is after um, Michael, a good friend of mine, is from... Damn it, don't forget where he's from. Is it Norway? No, it's not Norway. It might be. Oh, I can't believe I can't remember this. But anyway, he basically said, oh, I love um, the detune on the bass. And I tried to replicate it, and it didn't really work out, but... I, don't, I mean, I've, I think I've tried making a song with it in, but it sounds a bit weird. You know, detune's very hard to get right. Um... Basically a detune with an envelope, but I'll show you how to do that as well. <laughs> um, and also the LFO, obviously. I'll show you how to control the speed of the LFO. It's all coming, it's all coming, guys. Uh, what have we got? Drunken Hound. The latest one I made. Probably end up making another one out of this tutorial. This is, this is the most basic one I think I've made. She's usually pretty cool to go. Hmm. See, you get it wrong. I need to put a restart on that. I've not put a restart on that. Give me a minute. On the LFO. Why not? Oh, I only put it on one of the LFOs. No, but I've only used one of the LFOs. That's strange. It's meant to restart the LFO envelope when you press another note. I think it's when you press in two, though, it won't restart, which is kind of annoying. So, I so if I don't press them at the same time, they go out of sync. That's in sync. That's out of sync. Same two notes. Shame it out of the keyboard indicator uh, on there, but oh, never mind. Actually, there's a way to show that. There. Good, good if you could see the octaves. So you see, you press at different times, and then together. Yeah, get it exactly on it, it sounds awesome. It's really cool. Um, so that's all of my presets that I've made so far. Um, so let's get a, go ahead and start from scratch with this. Um, it's probably the best way to do it. So I'll start, like I said, with the... Basically trying to recreate Drunken Hound, I think. That'd be a good idea. So the first step you want to um, do is start with these three sections here. Um, you want to start with your first one, see what it sounds like. Yeah, it's pretty flat. I mean, you wonder how can a good sound come out of that, but it can. Um, and I, I haven't had, you know, years to try all these, but you do want quite a rough sounding one, you don't want these smooth squares or triangles, um, you do want saws. Jesus Christ. What the hell? I'm down an octave, this should be the, the, the uh, levels of bass here. That's middle C there. So that should be bass. <laughs> Why is that so high? That might work. Um, so it's a bit flat at the moment though, you do want another 
um, oscillators. So if you put one here, you'll notice it won't change. That's because the amplitude is actually uh, basically non-existent. You can hear that sub bass now. I hope you can. That actually sounds awesome. And as the last one, I probably want a smoother sounding one and a higher, higher pitch one. That's... Now you don't always have to use all three. There's no rule against that. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about... That may make for some kind of roary awesomeness. We'll see how that goes. Screaming. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see. Probably better to lower its intensity. Um, so for dubstep, we do actually want to go up to around 145. We're doing dubstep because, you know, we're doing dubstep bass. <laughs> um, but once you're up there, you want to go to these filters. Well, no, let, let's go with the effects first. Probably a better idea. Both the effects and the insert 1 and 2 down here are quite useful. You want to stay away from any uh, LFO just for, for the moment. But, you know, you can always come back to them. There's no, no rules against that. Let's just add a bit of a small reverb to this. Dry wet is basically the, the amount, size. I don't know, you just you just have to mess with it and it, it works. Not the most. I think the colour's more like the uh, pitches that reverb the most. So make sure here this is never clipping. You don't want that. So, we've got basic sound now. That's now. There's no real need to add a delay or anything at the moment. So, try this dimension expander. Seems just like a amplifier. Now, the EQ. Everyone's tempted to activate this and put the low shelf up like that. But um, I suppose it could work for some lower bases, but that that will mean you have to compensate a lot. Which, you know, could just have been achieved by doing that. You know, removing the low shelf and then upping that. That's actually improved it a lot. <laughs> um, so you don't really need too much of the EQ. I suppose you, you, you can, uh, but that can always also be done in the mixer here. Let's assign the two... Uh, the two... Plugins. Um, places in the mixer, always important. Your mixer might look different to mine. Um, I think I can change that just to make it easier for you. Yours might look like that. I don't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it also might look like that. No, it won't look like that. Um, but basically, it's the same thing. to put mine back the way it is though because I'm Japanese for some reason it looks better like that so now they've both oh they haven't both been assigned yet now they've both been assigned um, you'll see that Massive has got a little thing there so basically what the EQ in is is the same as here and this is probably easier and better and more effective than the EQ in here so if you want to pump up the lows stupid but you know, you, you could. Uh, you, apparently, you'd never ever put it above 12. That's what I've heard from tutorials. The odd few that I've seen, uh, you see that achieve the, the same effect if you do it there. So, yeah, I'd recommend using the parametric EQ if you have it. I don't know if you do. But if not, you still got that. Um, so then you want to... Just play around with some of these. Delay is... Merely like a echo, if you like. Reverb is an echo that's instant. It's like a <laughs> whereas delay is more like a <laughs> like a really large place. <laughs> Obviously, it's all simulated. It's almost like being in a cave, but it's not. Bit crusher. Bit crusher is nice. I don't know what they do. It's magical.
I'm tempted to just go. So that's compromise. Stop it. No, naughty. Okay. <laughs> right. So you know, because it's cool. You know, there's, there's there's no. It's not too much technical stuff. It's all about the sound. You need to use your ears more. Uh, things you do need to make sure of are clipping. That that's all about. You know, maths and stuff. Uh, BPM. You know, that's beats per minute. You want to get it in sync. Like I said, the detune. Um, that must be like if we detune this by eleven. See what it does, it puts everything out of sync. Now if we just do that one by one more to twelve, which is an octave. I don't think that's quite as noticeable, but it can have a huge effect. No, it does not seem like there's anything to gain from Oh wait. Okay, if that's the that's the lower levels, I'll probably want to put these down then. See, I was actually transposed by an octave. And I thought that sounded good, and then obviously... What happens? See, I don't want to leave it, actually. I don't want to... That's a really nice sub bay, so I don't want to really touch that. Probably this I'll hire again. That's not sounding much like a dubstep bass at the moment, and that's because we haven't applied the filters to it and the LFO, which really are pretty much um, necessary. I mean, you still use normal basses in dubstep like that, but for the main body of it, you really want to use the LFO basses. Uh, so let's get on with that without further ado. Um, this will involve using the filters now. So as I said, just use the, this to compensate, get it, as, get it as close to the top as you can without it actually going red like that. It's probably necessary, uh, but do be aware that if you're making a bass, try not to go for the high notes because, as you can see, they'll clip, but the low ones shouldn't. If we wait for that to, it's still clipping. Um, now, part of that clipping issue that I found is something I don't like with this default amp here. Um, so this controls the envelope of the the, the main body of it. This is for the, everything combined. Um, and with the default amp, it uses the envelope 4 here, and as you can see, the attack at the start of it, this is basically how the note goes. So it starts at nothing, it goes vroom, fades off, and then when you let go, because this is infinite, because um, it's a, it's a uh, generated sound, it's not a WAV, so there's no constraints to how long you hold it down. Um, but eventually, when you let go, it'll go vroom, like that, it'll go. It's not instant, it's quickly cut off, but um, by default, all of these are set, so it starts really high and then fades off pretty quickly. I don't know if I want that. So, either move this down, and also the attack probably needs to be pretty more, pretty much at minimum. Um, but I'd rather what I'd do is um, leave the attack at minimum, put the level up, um, to its well to the maximum, I suppose. Oh, no, don't change the delay. Um, but then just do that. If you want a, you know, a flat sound that's there and gone, and you know, some dubstep is quite clean, and it's, and especially for drum and bass, you want it to be really quite choppy. You don't want things being left behind or slowly fading out and all this. I mean, on some instruments you will, but for the exact one we're making right now, I don't think it's necessary. And you'll notice that. Um, now, well, pressing multiple notes is probably not a good idea. Um, but let's just lower this. I'll keep messing about with that. Uh, don't worry, guys. <laughs> I'm just... So, pressing multiple notes could make, cause this to clip if you, if you set it to its maximum. But you just want to test it so that... 
it's comfortable. Um, but like I said, um, you'll also notice that um, pressing high notes will get you to click very easily. Um, so that's why basses stay basses. It's not usually like people people go. I mean, that's the point. We do want to be going probably up here. Um, I have my headphones on very low because uh, it, the headphones that I have, it'll basically pick it up again. <laughs> that looks pretty safe. Bit of clipping, but, you know, it's, it's fairly safe. So, yeah, just try and get it as high as you can. Um, it's all about that in modern music these days. Um, you'd have to also uh, follow through that concept. Of getting it as high as you can without clipping um, for the the entire track, but just in, in each sound, as long as nothing's clipping, it doesn't get distorted and stuff. Um, so that's just the volumes. And like I said, you want to make it as flat as on off as possible for a uh, bass, just in case you have a really long note and you don't want to hear it start going just phase off and that gets lost or anything. You just want it flat. Uh, that obviously can change, but for the bass we're doing, like I said. I think it should be pretty much flat. Uh, it's not the sub bass if we do that. Gives it a bit more of an edge. Um, so basically these two are just effects that can be applied and so are these effects, literally, effects. Uh, like I said, the EQ can be done via the parametric EQ, EQ of the, and that gives a better judgement of where the areas are. Because if we... I mean, what we could do is stop it from clipping at the high notes, is just lower these. Slightly. Like that. God, we're still pretty low though. That's really quite strange. Going up in tiny values. Okay, well, let's see what happens if we do that. That works. It's basically making the bass as loud as the high notes because the high notes can get really. Quite loud. Um, it's a bit strange, isn't it? Let's keep this fairly level. Uh, what you most people like to do is cut off the ends here, literally, because uh, they can not sound very nice on some systems. I mean, that saved it from, I think, just killing me. <laughs> it doesn't make much difference, but still. It's common practice, um, but you do that more on the uh, track itself. But anyway, um, so you've set up the basic oscillators, you've set up the main envelope, and, and this can be very so greatly. Like I've used these envelopes for pitch bend uh, and for panning and stuff, um, but we'll show you that in a bit. For now, we're going to go straight onto the LFO because I'm aware of time. Um, Basically, 5 LFO, you want to assign to a filter, all you do is click on the 5 LFO. Now, you might not be on, oh well, it seems like you will end up being on it wherever you go. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure the BPM is the same as this BPM up here, which it usually is. External sync. Um, and also, the, the other thing you'd need to probably make sure of is, you can find it. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go, voicing. Now, either you want it to go so you can press multiple at the same time, that's polyphon. Um, but if you just want it so it's one, see that? I'm actually holding both keys, but it'll only let me press one. And that can be good if you got these bases that just clash if you got more than one at the same time. That's mainly in performances because you can get it exactly 
you know, grid lined up in, in a Flash Studio. Um, but for performances, it just makes sure that you don't clash, like, you know, for a second. Um, and that's just the amount of voices you can use. I'm going to be using Polyphone, Polyphone, just because I want. I like the dual. We're actually getting like three octaves of. We're getting six octaves of um, sound. Well, no, it'll be overlapping, so we're getting about four or five. Um, basically, you've got the minus twelve, the zero and the twelve. But then you're going up an octave, so you've got the plus twenty-four. And another plus twelve. I suppose you're getting one more octave, but it makes it sound a lot thicker, the bass. Um So yeah, let's get on with LFO <laughs> causing you to die. So the the basic one is the sine wave or the let's forget the name of it, damn it. Let's see the name by going into FMA. I'm not getting distracted guys. I should I'm just annoyed that I don't know this from science. Um ba -ba -ba. Ah the parable. No not the parable. I thought it was a double... Where is it? Well, it must be the parable. Okay. Well, that's basically... Well, if you check, the, check out the wave shape, yeah, it's the same as the sine wave. Basically, it's... it's um, that's the technical term for it, the parable. The parabolic curves. Um, so let's assign these now, before you just kill me. Um, so what you do is you literally just... You'll see this when you open Massive. Oops, uh, just go there, just click it, you just have to click it, you can let go of the mouse and just drag it around. Well, yes you can. It, uh, only within the massive window, obviously. And assign it here. Put it to filter 1. Currently that will do absolutely nothing. Next you want to select one of these. A, uh, I would not uh, preference any of them. Try them all. Nothing stopping you from trying them all. But I'm going to go for daft for this one. Uh, you can also have two, as you notice there. So that's still not doing anything. Now if you put this cutoff up, it still won't do anything. It's applied the filter, but not an LFO. And that's because you want to keep this, well, keep it in the middle for now, don't touch it, um, but you want to experiment with how harsh it's going to be. To do that, um, and to see it's the, the effect of the LFO, you want to click it and drag up or down, and that'll basically increase its effect. It'll be like, I'm going all the way up here and all the way down there. It's hard to tell the difference, but put it in max and it should be... Uh, and then this is where it gets interesting, you need to put it... If you put it dead low... Basically you're getting nothing at its lower end and the maximum at the top end of that filter. If you put it at the top though, it is basically going down to the bottom and the top again. So practically, uh, because you fill up so much area, you fill up the 360 degrees with the... Low, with the going down of the wave uh, and they're going up, you've, you've literally filled up the 360 degrees yeah. uh, cutoff is no longer applicable um, cutoff can be applicable if you turn this down basically it'll never go less than half uh, but it will go to the maximum um, put it down here though it'll never go more than half uh, but it will go to the minimum so you can play around with that that's pretty good, in the middle, almost going to the each side, probably max it out, I suppose. Get it a bit harsher. I need to put restart on this thing. So I actually had some melodies in my head that sounded good for dubstep basses. I've completely forgotten. Completely forgotten. Uh, so we're going to have to do without them. Actually, was it something like... Nah. Nah, I don't know, I don't know. No idea, but you know I'm not here to teach you actual music. I'm teaching you how to use a plugin. Uh, at least in this tutorial. Uh, so there's the LFO, but you know, you can't make dubstep out of that. It's all it's so flat. I 
So if you think your bass is lacking a bit, uh, if you watch my keyboard area, I'm actually pressing two at the same time. But of course, I'll feel changes. That's the whole point of it. Um, you know, it's meant to go. I can't do it very well. Um, but you know, the speed's meant to change, and I'll show you that in a second. But we just want to um, mess about with these different types of waves. So that looks like it never goes less than half again, and it repeats that instead of. You know, it's more in the more in the above. Hundred percent, obviously. It's like a harsh one. If you set up the rate. Now, of course, that can be used awesomely. <laughs> you know, you can imagine, like, really harsh. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I, might, I might use that, it's pretty cool. These are just the, these are, yeah, some of them are quite strange. Um, but you, if, I'm just gonna go with that one actually, it's quite cool. Now, I'm not sure about the second one, I don't think this has any effect, which is quite worrying. Uh, Uh, but anyway, let's just don't worry about that. You can always sync it up, but that's not very really good because you won't be able to change it dynamically through the song. So it's pretty much pointless. You're gonna have to keep this wheel. Uh, one thing I do don't, one thing I don't like about this is let's check out the rate at the minimum. I'm just gonna assign it to my keyboard controller very quickly. Um, basically, what I've done this is really useful. You've got a MIDI plugin. Um, as you've seen in the other tutorials, you can right click, create automation clip. So, say, I don't know if you can do it in FPC, let's see. Might, it should have support for it. Uh, I don't seem to. Yeah, you can right click, create automation clip here. If you go into massive, um, you will not find the option. This is massive zone menu, you know. So, you're like, damn, how do I change the rate over time? Uh, what you have to do is basically an external. Control, so you just go multi link to controllers, then you click the one you want. Bing! I, I had to do the sound effect, sorry. Did that, did that select it? I can't remember, but it must have. Yeah, when that comes up, it shows that it's been selected. Then you want to right click it. Uh, and you would, if you don't have a MIDI controller like me, then you just go create automation clip, and that can plan out the rate throughout the song. Um, but for me, because say, like, if you want to do live recording, it links to controllers, then you know, bearing in mind that your controller's in and it works like mine already does, um, I could press a key on my keyboard, and that should assign it to the keyboard's um, range, which would be quite cool. Or, uh, let's try that now just because I've got another option as well. So, ah, but then I can't, I can't actually, I've ruined it. See, because now I can't. That one key is now a toggle. Crap! Crap! <laughs> Damn. Let's try and undo that. <laughs> Override generic links. Generic link setting. Oh, the key's still assigned. Well, give me a minute. Maybe if I assign it to a different... Um, Control apart, then yeah, it will. Cool. Right, I've actually signed it to my modulation wheel, which allows for much smoother but less control over the rate. And the issue that I have with the rate is, and this is why I don't like the lack of control. Uh, if you watch my rate meter very carefully here, you won't be able to see my modulation wheel. But as I turn it up, all right. So the rate of this is is just infinitely long, practically. So I'll start turning it up. So it is getting faster, but very marginally. Sounds like I'm just turning up the other focus. The rate's going so slow. There you go. So we 
stuff around there. You can see it's starting to get some kind of speed. Now what I don't like is that massive range where it's practically the same, you know, in, in song terms. Uh, is then... Look at the range before... I actually have to work on controlling it really harshly. Then look at all the wasted range, because let's be honest. You don't want the elephant to go too fast. And listen to this. I don't like the last quarter. This is what I'm saying is that I feel like from about there, all this should be cut off. Forget that. And allow for a longer range, because if you're trying to do it fast, like... Like, I can't. I can't control it very well. Probably, it might just be a personal thing, but, um... But, yeah. Oh, well. Cool. Um... So, we've, we've talked about the type of LFO, right, the rate. So, yeah, as I said before, you want to actually get this working with your song, so... You want to select that again. Select the rate, um, then you want to right click this, and create an automation clip, and there it is. And now you'll notice, if I do this, and that, and that, if I run this while I'm holding down a key, if I run this while I'm holding down a key, key, oh, crap, noob. Yeah, you can basically see what it does. Um, let's make this a bit more formal, let's get a bit of a beat going. Oh, that's alright. Let's just add a couple of effects to this bad boy. Bit of a sound goodizer. Bit of a reverb, just a slight one. Not like that. That sounds pretty cool. It's hard to tell. Hey, yeah, hey, hey. It's my um. That'll do. So we'll get four bars of that, <laughs> not three. Eight. Wait, what? Uh, I didn't place that right. Ay ay ay. Mamma mia. There we go. I want the envelope back, damn it. There it is. Well, it's actually a shitty envelope. If we place any if we place any base now, nah, it'll sound shit. Um So let's make a new pattern for the base. Cause we need a pattern uh, if we want to mess with the LFO. So just ensure that you're actually on the right instrument before um you start, unlike me. There we go. Um so let's see what we need to be a bit lower. Obviously the rate is completely dependent on what you decide to put in a minute. So I'm going to do some very basic, um, literally basic, ha ha, um, Melody, so to speak. What scale am I using? That works. Let's try that out. No. Yep, switch. Pretty cool, pretty cool. It's quite a soft basis, isn't it? Um, but of course, uh, what I usually like to do is actually just this anyway. Uh, are we higher or lower than? I 
think it will go lower. See. Oh crap! Never copy something from. I added some nice sub to it, but I'm not sure if I want it to go higher instead of lower. Higher, lower. Might as well. Let's have all three in there. It sounds cool. So while you can apply all these um, techniques to you know one instrument, I'm just going to show you the basic LFO with a massive. I'm going to show you some enveloping with some other instrument, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so let me just must mess about with this. Um, with this a bit, I'll be as precise as you can. Don't be afraid to make it jump from note to note. So, for example, oi, place the note. What? Um, well, for example, I could do that. It just jump. There's no transition. It's literally a straight up line. Bow. Now the hard thing with this is, at least in FL Studio, as far as I know, I can't confirm this, but if you, you've only got one envelope, so either you copy the envelope over and over and over through the song, or you have to manually place this, there's no way of selecting an area. Now this might be my noobness, and I will, I will make sure that I um, live up to that, I, I, I will correct that if I'm wrong, but... Either you have to place every note throughout the entire song, which is good in dubstep, but you do need some variation, and that's what I've been lacking on, I think. Um, but it'll, what I'm saying is you can't say, okay, I want to copy this section like it can with the notes. Now, I hope I'm wrong about that. I mean, I am tempted to try and select an area in here, or try... But, you know, it, it, you can't. As far as I'm concerned, the envelope has to be completely done by you, or you can just go, okay, well, I like that section, copy it. But you can't make another one. If I do, let's see what happens if I do. I mean, there's no harm in trying, right? Um, plug in. Oh, of course, we've only used one LFO as well. You could use two LFOs. That, that can make a nice, nice sound. Um, let's see what happens if we do. Oh, tap it. Hell yeah. I can't believe I, I didn't know that. Uh, well, that helps. Okay, I was wrong, I was wrong. So you can have like a section of the same envelopes. This is fantastic <laughs> for me. See, I learned lots during these tutorials. I'm just wondering why it's not arguing with itself. Let's see what happens if I switch these around. Maybe it's in order of... Would you actually listen to that then? It does, so there are two separate envelopes that work together, but, um... Oh well, I'm not going to fret about it. It works. I want that to be... Ooh, I love that boy! Oh, we got that timing wrong, just because of where that was placed. Idiot. Now, I've not created the most amazing bass in the entire world. It's pretty simple, but it, it, it fulfills the purpose of the tutorial.
Now, well, I... Well, no, that's first of all, matter. I won't, I won't talk about that. <laughs> so, we, we've had enough of that envelope now. We don't need that anymore. We can now just... We can just copy this by going click and clicking again. Or clicking and holding shift and dragging. So... What I like to do, this is what I was going to say, but I held off from doing is just saying envelope, like match these envelopes up. It, it's useful in some other envelopes like volume and that, but for LFO, it's it's meant to change, so it doesn't really matter. And that will change for any copies that you make, which is why I was getting a bit confused. Like if I change it on here, it changes on there. We'll show, demonstrate that now, as you can see. But it must have different names for each LFO, which is why I'm going to have to start naming my envelopes. And then we can just apply that to the end. Get this lined up a bit. That's alright. Copy this melody of melodiness over. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to construct a song and show you how to use um, Massive at the same time. So when it gets to this bit, The most amazing tune, but it works. <laughs> and of course, you can just go yoink. That's my new so section, so I wanted to use a different. Um, kind of LFO thing, and you know, the thing with LFO basses is it adds a whole new thing, like, you know, other instruments don't have this envelope, they've got volume, they've got pitch, they've got, you know, chords if you like, um, but they don't have speed of bass, they don't have speed of low frequency, you know, low frequency op oscillation, you know, they just don't have it. That's, that, that's what's so unique about, stop pressing these keys. I'm actually not that... I mean, that bass, that drum sequence isn't actually that bad, though. See how it changes now. Um, after further that, I'm just going to... Um, because there's going to be a new instrument coming in, I'm going to start the... These four bars. No, was it four bars? No, it's it all of those. Probably too much. We don't. I was just demonstrating that you can copy that, but we don't need. We don't need it as long. Uh, so we're just gonna remove that. I've screwed up. Ay ay ay, mamma mia! Right, put that there. I'm just gonna clone this pattern now, um, but without clone. Without the high frequency, I think we don't need the higher frequencies. That makes for a nice intro. So we'll do that. Plunk that in there. Play that twice. Move these up. Like so. There we are. Um. So that means now that we're having a new section, we probably want to change up the drums a bit as well. Button one. Uh, we want to clone that. Now you have to add variations and stuff like for the ends of uh, the bars. Um, I forgot what they're called. Basically, the sections. I can't. I can't remember the musical lingo at the moment. Um, but yeah, you need to switch it up, like mine's far too simple at the moment, but I'm just going to have the intro bit, and, you know, 
the main bit. Um, that's now pattern two, is it? Okay, pattern two. Prepare. Damn it. Pushing it in place. That. Cool. Oh well. Move all these up. I know this. I'm constructing a song, but I just want to show you how massive. I want to show you everything about massive, not just how to make an alpha bass. Wow, that's it. Um, probably switch up the these up a bit. Maybe make them a bit faster. I don't know why I move that. Of course, we do have the uh, reverse, so if we can time it right, like that, probably about there if you want it to sound by that. that. Works. Do I have a light ride? No, we don't. Oh well. <laughs> the light ride could have been the reverse crash, but nah. Could have done with some toms actually. I don't think I've got any toms. Dum dum dum. Or the pedal hi hat. Damn it. Oh well. I said it was going to be basic. It's a bit thicker, I suppose. I'm no expert. New section. Hey guys, this is Face here. I just wanted to say thanks for watching the first part of this tutorial. I understand it's very long, um, but you know, that's where I roll. I'm afraid I can't really just show you the basics because I do want to show you, you know, people were asking for actually how to make songs. And so I thought it might be better just to show you how to integrate it with FL Studio as well. You know, not just how to make the sound, but also how to control it with an FL Studio. I basically want to cover all the grounds. So, you know, this is why I make these long videos. Um, there's always a brief ones. They're already on the internet. I mean, I really don't see the point in me completely copying them. So that's my justification for the length. Um, but look forward to the second part. I really do recommend that if, you, if you're happy to watch long videos, uh, stay for the second part, which should be up within a few days. Um, because the second part actually shows you not just how to make the bases, but also sequenced instruments, um, like keys, um, and all sorts. And it really does expand on what I've shown you. Um, and basically we end up creating... The majority of a song so i just want to say thanks again for watching guys um stay tuned um and if you have any questions feel free to leave me a personal message um i got a lot of those messages um with the fl studio tutorial so i'm used to it <laughs> and sound issues fixed i hope there's nothing anyone can hate on apart from the length but you know it's a loss if you don't watch so apart from that guys i'll see you very soon